Welcome to the Biobalance HealthCast, Episode 610. Dementia. How to avoid this end to your life. Biobalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of Biobalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at Biobalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the Biobalance HealthCast. Today we're going to talk about a difficult subject, especially if you are someone who has had a parent or grandparent who has had dementia of some kind, either dementia because of strokes or dementia because of Alzheimer's or any other type of um, aging problem that has ended in uh, them, them not being able to take care of themselves and them not being able to recognize who you are or remember you as they get old. Because one of the things that makes us human and makes us enjoy life is remembering our life in the past, remembering the people in it, remembering what we used to enjoy, even if we're not doing it right now. Like, I used to love downhill skiing, and I still do. And every once in a while, I'll get up the courage to do it. But we used to downhill ski Every, every winter, at least one week, we would go and downhill ski in Colorado. It was so much fun. I still remember it vividly. But now when I downhill ski, I'm a little bit more wary and I'm really careful <laughs> because I don't want to have an accident and I don't want to stop being able to work or take care of patients. So your youth gives you a little more courage or a little more uh, brainlessness. I'm not sure which. In any case... Those are things that make your life more vivid as you get older. You remember all the things that you used to do or that you like to do or the people that you love, and you don't want to lose that. Well, that's what happens with Alzheimer's and dementia. And those are the things that if you've ever seen a loved one go through that, you don't ever want to go through it yourself or have your spouse go through it either. So... Oftentimes, my patients are worried about themselves or worried about their spouse, and they're like, what can I do to not get dementia or Alzheimer's because I may have the genes for it, or they already know because they went to 23andMe and they got their results showing that they have a risk for Alzheimer's or dementia. So uh, because of these things, I get this question a lot, and um, the answer is complicated, so in, I am going to um, show you a list of things that are risks for dementia and Alzheimer's that are risks now that will then project to the, to the end of your life or uh, as you know it. Um, so these things may cause you to have the problem or actually turn the genes on that you have that were already programmed in you. And... I want to say one thing about genes. Genes aren't your destiny. There's something called epigenetics that we figured out in the recent 10 years that your genes can be turned on and off by your lifestyle. So you are not doomed to Alzheimer's just because you have a certain genetic makeup. That's very important because if you think you're doomed, you're not going to do anything about it. And you can change your genes and turn them off so that you don't have that disease or a symptom of that disease. So um, <clears throat> I read research every day that tells me this causes uh, Alzheimer's or dementia. This is something that you can do to prevent it. So I collated all the most recent research that I've read in almost every specialty. And the, the basic problems that lead to Alzheimer's uh, more than just specifically Alzheimer's, is inflammation, having inflammation all the time, having a high CRP all the time, and having the situation or the um, lack of health that causes you to have the inflammation all the time. And that is a very high risk for Alzheimer's 
as a type of dementia. The other things are uh, atherosclerotic vascular disease, the same things that cause heart attacks, but having plaque on your blood vessels, having um, blood vessels that don't dilate anymore, uh, having, and that also causes high blood pressure, which is also a risk factor for dementia. Um, obesity is a huge risk factor because obesity um, causes inflammation. Fat causes inflammation and chronic inflammation that you have all the time. And being fat also gives you insulin resistance over time. Insulin resistance is prediabetes and it increases your blood, blood sugar level. A high blood sugar level is bad for lots of things. It, put, it sets you up for cancer because cancer loves sugar. So if you've ever had cancer and you don't want it back, cut sugar and carbs out of your diet because they're deadly for you because that could increase your risk of having a recurrence. If you are worried about dementia and are truly worried, that's one of the things you can actually do to help yourself is to cut carbs out of your life, do all the things that you need to treat diabetes and actually reverse it so that your blood sugars are normal. Use any medication that is offered to you and try to get your blood sugar down. Tight control is very important. We can actually have someone who has diabetes, have them on diet, exercise, and hormone replacement if they're over 50, and because that makes everything possible. And then we can also use the medications like metformin, ozempic, all of these new medications for both weight loss and diabetes that will reverse the process. And that will cause these people, you still call you a diabetic, but you don't have the symptoms or the blood sugar of a diabetic. You still have to worry about it because you don't want to go back to that. So you have, you have to actually take care of it. But your body's not being bathed in too much sugar all the time, every cell. And that's not good for ED. It causes ED. And that's one of the things I can't fix with just testosterone. Um, ED is one of the biggest fears of men, but it doesn't keep them from eating sugar all the time. Uh, they should think about that every time they put a donut in their mouth. So um, other things that increase... Uh, Alzheimer's and dementia are smoking. We always knew that that was, that was bad for you, but we thought it was bad for you for lung cancer. It's also bad for dementia. Uh, alcohol. Alcohol is not ever good. It's a toxin. It causes you to, um, we used to say pickle your brain, but basically it damages your brain every time you're drinking. So unless you're drinking less than four ounces of wine a night, then I think you should get it down to that level or stop drinking altogether if you don't want to have dementia. Uh, a poor diet is also, and we'll discuss what a poor diet means, but um, that is also a general negative for dementia. So if we're looking at this, we're saying poor diet means you don't cook meals from scratch, you eat junk food, you eat processed foods, stuff with uh, preservatives in it, anything, chips, dip, cookies, crackers, Anything that is packaged has preservatives so that it doesn't go bad while it's waiting on the shelf. So anything that you eat like that has preservatives, and, and that is not good for your brain. Um, anytime you eat canned food, there's lots of salt in that, increases your blood pressure, it doesn't have the nutrition that fresh and frozen foods have. So fresh and frozen foods are much better for you, fresh being the best, especially f uh, fruit and vegetables. Um, not eating baked goods is also a, a benefit because baked goods have a lot of carbohydrates in them. So that just turns to sugar immediately and increases your risk of diabetes. So those are the things that you can do right now in your diet uh, and in your how you take care of yourself. But there are other things that I'd like to go over. And um, I'm putting up a list of the things here that show what the many modifiable risk factors are for getting dementia. And this list uh, goes from having a low, low sex hormones, which is testosterone and estradiol. And let me start by saying, if you replace your testosterone when you lose your testosterone between 40 and 55, if you're a man, and 40 and 50 if you're a woman, that will protect you at the end of your life and give you 10 years without Alzheimer's. It's been shown that. We have studies that show that. 
if you replace your, if you're a woman and you replace your estrogen, that gives you a second 10 year extension on your genetic uh, plan to get Alzheimer's. So you'll get an extra 20 years if you do both. So that's very important and that's number one for me and that's what, that's why, that's one of the reasons I um, use uh, testosterone and estrogen myself and offer them to my patients because I have um, a parent that had difficulty with this and I watched my mother-in-law have difficulty with this. So it's, it is one of those close to my heart things I'd really like to help prevent with my patients. And there are things you can do and there are things I can do to help my patients uh, not get Alzheimer's. And one of them is replacing your sex hormones. It also means getting all of your other hormones normal. If your cortisol is high, bringing it down. If, you're, um, if your thyroid is low, replacing it and giving you enough thyroid to uh, be the metabolizer in your diet, or excuse me, in your body. Um, treating all the illnesses like obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, um, depression, um, and, and changing your lifestyle so that you're not sedentary, you're not sitting around all the time. Those are, those are big, big things in your life that you can change. You have to, basically you have to do what anybody does when they change houses. You have to pack up all the old stuff and throw it out and get it, rid of it. And then you have to have a plan on how to organize everything in your new house. So that's what you should do. You should think about your body as your house, reorganizing it, making it healthier. So that's, very important. It takes time and planning. You can't do this willy-nilly. And often my patients need a coach or somebody to help them. And being a doctor, I can help them with medication and help them with uh, medications for pre-illnesses, pre-diabetes, pre-high blood pressure, that kind of thing. So that gives me an added value for my patients. So next on my list are foods to eat to prevent dementia. So the biggest one that is not what you think are eggs. Eggs have great protein, and they have healthy cholesterol and lecithin that are balanced. These are excellent forms of a protein. There's only 70 calories in an egg. And eggs, unless you bathe them in butter, are excellent foods for you to build muscles and to build um, brain tissue, actually. You need cholesterol. Did you hear me say that? You need cholesterol for your brain. Brains are made 90% of cholesterol. So if you are being told that you need to get your cholesterol as low as possible, it's a lie. It may help your cholesterol. You may never have a heart attack, but then you'll have dementia and not care or not know anybody. So you, you can lower your cholesterol enough to give yourself dementia. So that is not what I suggest. I suggest eating cholesterol, clean cholesterol, not junk food, not prepared foods, but clean cholesterol like eggs and meat and fish. Um, we want to have you take something. We all, always suggest cumin. Cumin is, is a spice. It is in our DIM product, which is something to stop uh, make, to help you stop making estrone, which gives you belly fat. So it's a supplement called DIM, and it has curcumin in it, and that is a spice that helps decrease inflammation. So it works in two ways. Um, good foods to eat, anything with pure protein in it. Um, whey protein, if it is um, highly processed, whey is from, from, you know, curds and whey, you've heard about, you know, Little Miss Muffet. Anyway, whey is, um, is the watery product. The curds are the thick, you know, cottage cheese product. Anyway, whey is a protein, and it's used in many weight, uh, weight training products. You just have to make sure that it, 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 your body gets along with it. So you have to try it out probably before you buy it or get a sample of it. Um, yogurt and other foods <clears throat> like kombucha, I won't say it right, kombucha are um, foods that have probiotics in them. And Here's what probiotics do. They feed the gut bacteria that you have. Your gut bacteria is so important. If you're not taking a probiotic right now, you are missing the boat because it makes your neurotransmitters. It makes all the things that your brain needs to make you think. If you're not taking a probiotic, you're not feeding your gut bacteria, you need to feed it. 
and get more neurotransmitters. If you're depressed, this will help your depression. If you're anxious, it'll help your anxiety. Our food is so very important to the bacteria that lives in our gut, and our gut pays us, and our gut bacteria pays us back by making our neurotransmitters, even serotonin, even dopamine, all of those things are made in our gut. So treat your gut well, feed it the things it needs, and, um, and two of the things that actually improves that besides just probiotics you take in a uh, capsule would be the uh, yogurt has lactobacillus in it and kombucha has other kinds of uh, probiotics that you can drink with it. Um, I tried it once. I stick with yogurt because kombucha does have an unusual taste and some people like it and it just didn't hit my palate right. So always have clean, fresh foods, meaning... Foods that you get in the vegetable and fruit aisle, not f stuff that you get in the dried fruit aisle, because, you know, dried fruit has sugar in it. They don't make anything except in a health food store in terms of dried fruit without pouring sugar over it. It makes no sense. People shouldn't have to have that. I think that it's more of a preservative than anything else. But don't eat that. Make your own dried fruit. I mean, if you have to. Uh, steam your vegetables. Don't, don't cook them to death. They shouldn't be mushy. They should be crunchy. And then add a lot of seeds and nuts to your diet. They are, very, they are very good for you. They have a lot of protein and they have healthy fats. And then if I could say one more thing, eat fish at least twice a week. Fish is so important. And I don't mean fish sticks. I mean fish. Like fish that you saute, you bake, you, you grill, real live fish. So those are very, that's very important for all of the um, omega oils that you need in your brain, in your cell walls. All of those things are very important to keep your brain intact. Um, foods to avoid, to prevent dementia, all, all the inflammatory foods are foods that have preservatives in them. Milk, by the way, is an inflammatory protein. So, and lactose is a sugar. So I would never drink skim milk because that's just sugar water and very little protein and very little fat. And, but if you're going to drink milk, you should probably drink it before you're six. You know, when you're a kid, not even um, a teenager needs that much milk. Um, and many people find that the inflammation from milk is one of the causes of their arthritis or the inflammation in their brain. So. That's one way to, to uh, prevent infl inflammation. Soy is another uh, inflammatory protein. So are phytoestrogens. They go, oh, we'll cure your menopause with phytoestrogens. Well, that's from um, vegetables, roots, um, legumes, be beans. And these phytoestrogens don't cure your menopause. They don't lower your FSH or your LH. They may make you feel a little better. They're not really fixing the problem. And they can be causing a problem as well. Uh, wheat in some people, wheat is not good for them, and they should not ingest it. Um, if you have celiac disease, you should not have wheat or gluten in your diet because that causes inflammation. And then um, so, so these are the things that you can do at home. Some of the modifiable risk factors we started to talk about, and that is replace all the hormones that you, you lose as you age. And that would be estrogen for women, testosterone for w both women and men. And don't do it in an oral fashion. If you take oral hormones, they go through the liver and they make other things that are not good for you or your brain. Um, testosterone will help you maintain your brain size and number of neurons. It is a, um, it is a hormone that causes repair that repairs your brain, repairs your muscle, repairs your bones. It makes that balance between degradation and rebuilding balanced so that your tissues don't just waste away as you see older people do. After 70, usually you see them get all hunched over. That's their, their uh, spine just, just wasting away and getting osteoporotic. And then their muscles are gone. It doesn't hold them up. So, I mean, walking straight up is a sign of health and youth. Walking like this is a sign that there's something really wrong with your muscles and your back and your bones. Um, if you are going to replace 
if you have a low thyroid, you should replace your thyroid. You shouldn't go around without thyroid. That causes your cholesterol to go up. It causes inflammation to go up, and it keeps you from losing weight. Neurotransmitters, you can take probiotics, and that will help your neurotransmitters. You should replace them by doing something very natural. One of the things I wanted to suggest um, in, the hormone, in the hormone area is that um, many of the estrogen replacement hormones that are given by, by regular primary care and OBGYNs are oral pills. And the oral pills and sometimes the patches and the gels may take away some of your symptoms, but if you look at the blood work, your LH and your FSH should be brought down to premenopausal levels if you have the right kind and enough estrogen and testosterone. When we do this, we try to bring the FSH into um, premenopausal range of less than 23, and we try to bring our LH into premenopausal range of less than 10. By doing so, you're avoiding dementia and osteoporosis. If you take hormones orally or some of the other uh, pharmaceutically approved products, your FSH and LH stay high. I see people come in all the time on these other, um, on these other hormone replacements other than pellets, and they still have high FSH and LH no matter how high their estrogen is. It's still not suppressing the hormones that need to be suppressed, which is two brain hormones that come from your pituitary, and they, the FSH and the LH. So it's best to get the type of hormone that can suppress those two other brain hormones. So we talked about this before, but I want to just briefly go over it. Keep your blood sugar normal if you have diabetes, or if you don't, just don't eat a lot of carbs. Someday it'll get you. <laughs> I don't care. People come in and go, oh, yeah, I've done that my whole life. I'm going to be fine. Well, then I see their insulin's high, and then their hemoglobin A1C is, not, is almost diabetic or pre-diabetic. So they're not escaping. They just have escaped for a period of time, and then they're going to be uh, hit by the bus of diabetes. So if you think you're lucky and you're escaping, you're really not. You're just laying the groundwork for something to, that we can actually test. Um, try to get to your ideal weight because being fat is inflammatory. We can't get rid of that inflammation. We try in many ways, and it's very hard unless we can get you to lose weight. Um, we talked about decreasing your alcohol intake, stopping smoking. Uh, exercise daily is really important. Aerobic exercise plus weight resistance. Aerobic exercise is important for your heart and your lungs and your overall um, muscle, muscle health, but building muscle requires weight training, and that three or four times a week is ideal. No amount of weight training and exercise is going to make you lose weight without dieting. Eating what your caloric burn is for a day if you do nothing. Uh, basically, your basal metabolic rate in, cal in calories would be enough for you to start losing weight with exercise. So you have to do both. You have to eat properly, and you have to get rid of soda. You have to get rid of alcohol. You have to get rid of desserts. And then supplements. Supplements, I'm going to put a list of supplements that I, that I recommend to prevent uh, problems with your brain. Um, they, they're in the antioxidant and the uh, vitamin D, A, B and C, there's several other things that we offer that will be listed here. Minerals are also supplements, and the minerals that you need are, it's a shorter list, it's zinc, magnesium, and electrolytes like sodium, potassium, um, especially if you're uh, exercising and sweating. We try to increase nitric oxide because that's the chemical that's made in your arteries that dilates your blood vessels and lowers your blood pressure and also causes men to have erections and women to have uh, blood flow to their pelvis before intercourse. So those are all, or before any kind of sex. And um, those are all things that are very important as well. So you can't fight your genes, but you can modify them. You uh, can exercise. If you had an early age of menopause, then replace your hormones as soon as possible. If you're a man who's had an early age of, of losing his testosterone, replace it. All of these things are going to help maintain 
your brain and your ability to think and recognize people and live a long time without being sick for a long time. Um, we are no longer tied, we thought we were, but we are no longer have any excuses just because our genes are bad. We can switch them off with something called epigenetics. So remember that. Please hear me, because I don't want to live in a world where all my friends and all my uh, patients or anyone I come in contact with has dementia, or they're being um, <laughs> stored in a nursing home uh, without knowing what's going on. That would just be a terrible, terrible end for any of us. So take care of yourselves and take care of your spouse and your children so that they can have a long life as well. The sooner they learn the rules about what to eat and how to, how to work out and uh, what to do about their uh, being overweight, the better and the longer healthy life they'll have. Thank you for watching. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.